everyone, Amanda here, thanks for joining me today. Today I've got a card tutorial for you. It's a very basic um, fold, it's not complicated and I've done that on purpose so that anybody, whether you're new to card making or not, can do this card. So we're starting with an A4 sheet of cardstock and we're going to cut it to 5 and 7 eighths for the length. So that's what length I like my cards to be. Okay, and then we're going to turn it on the long side and we're going to score first of all at one and a half inches, then four and a half inches, and then seven and a half inches. Okay, and that will give us a very easy but pretty concertina fold. Okay. Um, so what you need to do is um, fold the first short fold up and then the next one back and then the next one forward so that you've got a three stage, you know, like a, just a triple concertina card. Very simple but very, very effective and pretty. Fits neatly in a card, in, a, in an envelope and will sit nicely on wherever the person lucky enough to receive your card puts it. All right, so we're going to make this special with the papers, and the papers that I'm using today are the um, Peacock Plume Papers by Lou Collins. Okay, they're absolutely beautiful. So the theme of this collection, as you can probably guess, is peacocks. So here's the papers. Um, they really are absolutely wow. So, and you only need a right little bit because they're such fantastic, beautiful pieces. So the first one is cut at one and three eighths by five and three quarters. Okay. The second one is cut to two and seven eighths by five and three quarters. So the third piece is cut to four inches by five and three quarters. And we're going to layer those on. it's up to you this is beautiful this one it really does look like it's gold foiled and it's not it's beautiful absolutely lovely so then when you fold all three together like that look how fantastic they are absolutely stunning so we're going to decorate this with a very beautiful die cut so i'm going to show you the dies first where's the box so this is the die, so you get the aperture around the back, then you get the main die, then you get layering ones. So I'm just going to pause the video and get my stuff together and then we're going to make one of these together. I'm going to show you how I've done it. Okay, so I've cut the components um, of the card, well of the peacock anyway. Um, so this is, again, this is the um, die set. So six pieces. So I've cut the background. So we're going to layer our finished peacock. If I can pick it up, finished peacock on there. Okay. When we've coloured it, it'll lay on there, and then it'll have a lovely white background, and it'll be super pretty. And also, it'll help add dimension. All right. And then I've cut the large piece and the smaller piece. They layer up like so and you add it onto there when you've coloured them all and you can curl all the petals petals? no it's not a flower Amanda you can <laughs> curl all of the f individual feathers and stuff if you so desire I'm going to just uh, do it a quick way so we're just going to ink it now Start off and do the head with peacock feathers I'm using these silicon sponges I've got one for each colour my other silicon sponges are just silicon sponges that I've cut in four okay i need to invest in a, a big set of sponge darbers really um and i'm just going to very gently so i'm not doing the circular um inking motion like you would normally with your distress inks or anything i'm dabbing it so i'm using my distress inks to spot color something so if you
Okay, so here is my finished peacock. Um, I did end up going over with some Distress Oxides just to make the colours a little bit more vibrant and in some places I've shaded with alcohol markers again just to accentuate and then I've glued, the, glued it all together and it's lovely so it's in like layers and then what I did do because I'm a bit uh, uh, I'm never happy I always want that little bit extra on my cards. I've used this iridescent medium, which is my own, out of my stash. I love it. And I've very carefully, because I'd already glued it all down, painted it with a small paintbrush. And it just gives, I don't know if the light will pick it up, an iridescent um, glow to those die cuts. It would have been easier to do it before I glued them on. But I hadn't thought that far ahead. <laughs> And here's another one I did, a alternative. So this one was cut, all cut out like you saw in white card. Let me try and pick it up. All done in white card and then I inked it with sponges. This one I cut it out with some of the papers. I used this one. So I used this paper here out of the collection and cut all of the main components out and then layered them up okay so there's no colouring involved you can do it either way okay or if you've got a nice coloured cardstock you could use that but this paper did the job so we're going to have this as our focal point on our card so all we're going to do is we're going to attach it here to make it look like it's part of that flap like it's been cut out okay rather than stuck on <laughs> That is the uh, uh, that is the theory behind the madness. So I'm just going to get some of my glue. So let me just think where I'm going to be putting my glue. So I'm going to be putting my glue from here up to the head. Okay. And I'm just going to spot the glue because I am notoriously heavy-handed with glue, and you really don't need a lot. You only need tiny bits. I always use way too much. I'm terrible. I'm just going to spread that about a bit. Okay. And then I'm just going to fold my card out flat. And I'm going to start with there on that bottom corner and then go right up so that all of the edge of that short flap is covered with the die cut so like I say it looks like the edge is the die cut okay so pretty uh, I think I'm going to actually see if I've just got a little gem for um let me just see if I've got a little gem that we can oops avalanche um, see if I've got a little gem I can just put on his or her, I don't know if it's a boy or a girl peacock or if it's gender neutral. So on the peacock's eye, here, let's see if we can find, that'll do, one of them will do. Do we want green? No, I'm going to have that purple one there, I think. That's if there's any sticky left on these, they're so old, these gems. There we go. So I'll just stick that on the eye there, okay. That defines the eye for us, just a little silver rhinestone would do. And there's our beautiful card. Um, so I'm going to stamp, actually stamp a sentiment on the inside there, um, because I think it doesn't need anything on the outside. So let's have a look what sentiments we've got. So there's a sentiment pack here. Um, be proud. You are incredible. I like that one. I do like that one. Let's have that one. Hmm? Right, so I'm just going to find myself a suitable block. Bear with me, it's the first time I've used this stamp, so I just want it lining up nicely. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, I do things, I do everything manually, I like to make my life hard. Um, I don't use stamping positioning tools. I like to make my life complicated. Right, let me just see if that's going to fit on there first. If not, we'll have to put it on there. 
Right, so it's too big for there. Okay. Okay. Let's go to plan two. Is it going to fit on there? No. Okay. Not to worry. I thought it would fit in my inside panel, but it's so beautifully... Uh, such a beautiful statement piece, it doesn't fit. That's code for it's too big. <laughs> so I'm going to use my archival ink. It's, it does give me a nice crisp image. I know it does. And I know it won't let me down. And if it does, I'm not going to be happy. Let's just damp that there. I should really have used a mat underneath. But we'll see how it goes. If it doesn't stamp right, it's because it needs a mat underneath. Oh, that's that's beautiful. It's stamped perfect first time. Absolutely perfect. So what I'm going to do, because I'm obviously being quick for the uh, video, I'm just going to quickly heat set that, whether it needs it or not. It may well not need it, but I'm going to do it anyway. And then I am going to fussy cut mine. So there's all this lovely intricate detail here, which you could colour with watercolour pencils. I'm not actually going to do that on camera because I just need this tutorial to be a little bit to the point and quick. So don't forget to have a look at my blog. Um, I will be doing quite a few cards with this beautiful set and I will be sharing, I might come back and share with you. I might do another card tutorial but I will most certainly be putting them on my blog, absolutely 100%. Um, so you can go and have a look on there. You can follow me on Pinterest, Instagram, I'm everywhere me. <laughs> so I'm going to just use some foam dots to just raise it up a little bit okay and like I said I will probably go back after the video and um, add a little bit of colour to this with some alcohol markers just to give it that little bit of extra pop but you don't want to sit there and watch me colouring um, so Let's get this done and get it on. And that is our card. You are incredible. That is a beautiful, beautiful sentiment. Okay. Let's just see if we've got another little crystal that we can add to the sentiment there. Let's have a look. Where have we got one that I like? I quite like that purple one there. The very old days, they're, they're well, they're drying out, they're not brilliant. But you know, if you don't have um, colours that you like, get your alcohol markers on your standard rhinestones and colour them in. So there we go, I'll add some colour to that shortly. And you've got yourself a very, very pretty card that could have done with being moved over ever so slightly. That's just. No, it's fine. I'm not going to worry about it. So there you go. You've got your beautiful card. Okay. I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, I think that's really, really pretty. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.